Greetings, friends. As many of you have already heard, our provincial public health officer announced sweeping new measures today in the ongoing effort to bring the pandemic under control in our province. Under the new public health order, religious gatherings are not being permitted for at least the next two week period and probably longer. This means that we are required to suspend our Sunday in-person worship service this coming Christ the King Sunday and well into December. Like many of you, I was really looking forward to witnessing the lighting of our Advent wreath in the sanctuary, hearing the cadences of those wonderful Advent hymns fill the sacred spray space those Advent hymns expressing our longing for renewal, for light, for peace, to come into our lives and into our pandemic-weary world. I am saddened that we will not be able to gather in person for this very, very uh, special and important time in the church year and also in our own lives. However, Nonetheless, we remain connected to one another as a body of Christ. We will continue to live stream our Sunday morning service. We have ordered equipment that is on its way and that will provide us with better sound quality. Uh, we're going to host another coffee time Zoom later in December, and we will continue to reach out to one another with tenderness and encouragement through phone calls, you know, through words of encouragement on the street, um, we will continue to be the body of Christ. It has been a long nine months and we are entering what is probably the most challenging time of this pandemic in our province. We're tired, we're stressed, some of us are lonely, some of us are facing personal crises or illness in our families or extended families, and the restrictions placed on us, which constrain our normal ways in which we support one another, have made small challenges onerous and bigger challenges even harder to bear. But we are not without hope. Christ is with us and we have each other. We will get through these dark months of winter together. We are grateful, extremely grateful, that we had been able to gather for corporate worship safely for 16 weeks because all of us committed to the effort to keep ourselves and our neighbors safe. Our government and public health officials are now asking communities of faith to make a further sacrifice in the interest of the public good so that our hospitals do not get overwhelmed and that our children and grandchildren can continue to attend school. And Christ shows us the way. Christ's way is not about grasping for our rights or holding on to our freedoms or complaining uh, about what we have to do. The way that Christ shows us is about doing what is right for the sake of our neighbor. And as we look after our neighbor, we strengthen community. And when our community is strong, whether it's our church community or our civic community, we enjoy the benefits. So, dear Gloria Day family, stay strong. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, whom I invite you to join with me as we turn to Christ in prayer. Jesus, you endured the cross for our sake. 
help us to endure the separation from loved ones, the restrictions on our travels, the losses of the normal ways we worship and pray together. We come to you in our sadness, with our grief, and with our longing for relief and healing. But we are your people. We are your church at Gloria Day. And we turn to you with trusting hearts and with confidence in your loving presence among us now and in every moment of our lives. We stand before you as people of hope and place ourselves, our fellow citizens, and our leaders in your protection and love. May your peace be with us and enfold us today, tomorrow, and during the time ahead. Amen. Christ's peace be with you.